You only need to know three steps to make the perfect twin motion render. Step one, import your HDRI. Step two, master your textures. And step three, find and import the perfect objects. Today, I've partnered with Real World Textures to bring you the absolute best twin motion has to offer. So let me show you exactly how you can take your twin motion renders from basic to incredible. So to get started, we of course need to load Twin Motion, and today I'm running Twin Motion 25.1.1. The first thing after that is we need to import our model. So I've imported my Archicad model, which looks a little something like this, but today we're focusing on an internal render. I want to get the absolute perfect render of this interior space. Now, from this angle, we see everything on the upper floor. We see the main living room in foreground, the kitchen and the dining in the background and the indoor alfresco behind the sliding doors. But as you can see, it's just a terrible scene. There's not much going on and it needs a hell of a lot more love. So how do we break it down? Well, like I said, there's three steps. Step one, let's just go straight to real world textures and then we can move to their HDRI panel. There are 122 available HDRIs through real world textures and there's just endless choice. You know, you've got castles to mountains to valleys to farms and oceans and everything in between. When you've found something that you like, all you need to do is come across and hit the download button and it will automatically download your preset save preferences. For me, that's 8K. If we go into it and you wanted a higher resolution, you can scroll up and download the 16K version if you so choose. Now in Twin Motion, it's relatively simple to import a HDRI. We come across to ambience in the top right hand corner and then our environment panel opens on the right. We want to switch from dynamic sky to HDRI. And then in the preview section down the bottom, we want to press the three dots and go open. The HDRI guys that you've downloaded, you're just simply going to locate in your downloads panel, open up the HDRI that you're looking for first and then just hit open. You'll see an immediate improvement in the render quality just by importing a high quality HDRI. Now, for me personally, what I like to do instead of just working with this HDRI is going back to open and importing all of the HDRIs I've downloaded. So that way, when I come across to my user library into local HDRIs, they're all automatically there forever. So the first time I've imported them, I don't have to go and re-import them next time in my same project. And if you wanted to change the HDRI now that it's imported, we simply fly out into the scene and drag and drop our HDRI into the background. If I fly out, you'll see the HDRI is beautiful, crisp, and relatively well scaled. In fact, it might just be a little bit too big. So if we go back into our space, let's just go to media and create a new scene so we don't have to fly back into that every single time. Personally, what I like to do is move from Sky Dome to Backdrop because it gives me a bit more control and freedom of the size of the HDRI. So obviously, the rotation is our first step. So we get our light perfectly aligned inside our space as we need. Then we want to come down and set our backdrop to the perfect spot. So the first things first is our positioning tool. Let's just hit that in the middle. So now that HDRI is centered to this space. After that, we can adjust our height and our size. So first of all, you can see it's way too high up because the trees are above our floor. So if we simply drop that by about six meters, we'll see the flag and the house in the background. If we needed to decrease it or increase it from this point further, we absolutely could, and then just fine tune until we're happy. So generally speaking, that's relatively okay. The rest, we just keep fine tuning and playing with different HDRIs until we're happy with the final outcome. Once we've imported our HDRI sky, next we wanna come across to render and switch over to lumen. Now, the reason we switch over to lumen from standard is because our colors change, our material changes, everything gets a little bit better. That is obviously if your PC can handle it. If you want to take it to the absolute next level, hit the path tracer button. But for me, it's just a little bit slow and Lumen produces relatively similar quality results. I'll show you like for like at the very end of this tutorial. Now that we have our HDRI set up and we have our image set up, we want to go ahead and start importing real world textures. Now, no pun intended because they're coming from real world textures. Same as what we did before for the HDRIs, we just come back to textures and there's 5,540 to choose from. The easiest way is simply going through and finding what you're looking for in a category. If for whatever reason you can't find the perfect material, the perfect model, the perfect anything, come across to request digitalization. That's surprisingly harder to say than you might think. All you need to do is type in the product name or type, the brand, drop a link, and import a message. 
Now, it'll cost you a couple points, obviously, which is part of the pricing scheme. But if you need a texture for the perfect render and you just can't create it yourself, let the experts do it for you. Now, once you've downloaded a few textures, you wanna come across some materials at the bottom, and then we're gonna create a new texture. Generally, we're gonna be using standard textures. However, if you're looking for something like tire, foliage, or any of these here, well then you can go through those yourself, but let's just go standard for now. We wanna open up all of the details panels and then work our way through. Unfortunately, Twin Motion is manual import for all of your custom textures, but it doesn't take long. So first thing first, let's go texture, open, find the texture that you've downloaded, go into your preview, and then work your way through. I like to switch to list in this scenario. So for texture, we're looking for COL and we open it up. Scrolling down, roughness, pretty self-explanatory, open, rough, open. We go through all those same procedures. For metallic, we're looking for gloss. We press open for normal is one of the easiest ones out of all of them because it's still called normal on this one. And then ambient occlusion, finally to top it off, we add them all in. Once that texture has been created, you can easily drag and drop it onto any surface and then fine tune it until you're happy. So for instance, in this case, I'd like to rotate it 90 degrees and that's all I really need to do. After that, we wanna right click, rename, type in what you want it to be called and then hit the three dots. And before you add this to your user library, you wanna make sure you're in the right section because if I add this to my user library now, it will add it to my local HDRIs. Instead, we go back to our user library. I personally create new folders. So for instance, textures, and then add to user library. You'll see I already have that exact texture right here previously imported along with a whole bunch of other textures from real world textures. Because I have them imported, it's super simple to work through this render. I drag and drop my floor tiles onto my floor. I move through my timbers, spin around, change my stack stone. And then this is an interesting personal choice. I use polish plaster on my plaster walls and my ceilings for that premium finish. In Australia, at least, polished plaster is becoming a very sought after product as your base texture. Now, obviously, we're not going full shine, full gloss, so I tend to increase the roughness just a little bit so you can see the pattern rather than a smooth white wall so that the render has a lot of character. The one thing, unfortunately, real world textures doesn't have, and I could probably request it, is high quality glass. Luckily, Twin Motion has decent glass, so materials, glass, just drag and drop our clear glass in, and then play with your intensity until you're happy. I like a little bit of shine on mine, so I leave it about 15% personally. Now we've come so, so far in just a matter of minutes. To finish this off, we wanna go in and add objects. Now, Twin Motion has Sketchfab and Mega Scans, but realistically, those objects are pretty average and you have to hunt for weeks to find the perfect one. So instead, back to real world textures, down to models, and let's just go straight to furniture. You can browse through every single category here like normal, go through the subcategories to find the perfect piece, or if you're really particular about a certain product from a manufacturer, you, you can come up to the top here for into brands, and you can search by the actual brands rather than models and categories. So let's say for whatever reason, I was looking for this particular brand, we have the Tilly chair available to download immediately. Once we've found our objects, download them, all we need to do is come to import, hit the plus button, go geometry, and then open. You'll see I've downloaded a ton of different objects into my scene. And to bring them in, all we need to do is double click, find the FBS and open. All I do is press open, let Twin Motion do the rest, scroll to the very bottom, and generally Twin Motion puts it in the most random place. So we bring it back into our scene where we need it. There we go. We've got a beautiful yellow mustard couch that's extremely well detailed, extremely well textured that we can simply drag and place into our scene. Now we can repeat those same steps until we get to this. In this scenario, we've got the yellow couch, we've introduced a couple extra armchairs, a beautiful table. We've used the rug from Twin Motion, but we've imported a custom texture from Real World Textures. We've got the table in the background, a couple wall lights, some pendants, and you know, a couple characters from Twin Motion just to tidy off the space and make it feel like a home. I've even introduced a curtain, which is using the Sketchfab objects, but again, a real world textures, texture, 
to really give it the perfect finish. When we're ready, all we need to do is come to export, select our image in PNG, JPEG, or EXR format. For me, PNG is perfect and hit export. So as a comparison, this is the Lumen 4K export. It looks pretty bloody good. Lumen runs incredibly smoothly on the PC. You don't have to wait for path tracing to tidy bits and pieces up. It just creates a masterful render and it lets you work through with pace and precision. As a comparison, this is the Path Tracer 4K render. Now, for me personally, the Lumen 4K is significantly better than the Path Tracer 4K. The Lumen exported quicker than the Path Tracer did, and it's produced a more realistic result with better shadows. We then also have the 8K Path Tracer option available to us, which, you know, to be fair, is incredibly detailed, is incredibly high resolution because it's 8K, not because it's Path Tracer. For me personally, I would definitely be rendering with Lumen for all of my scenes using the real world textures at your eyes and objects. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that subscribe button down below. If you wanna test real world textures, the link is in the description. But like always, I'll see you next week.